Have you ever been playing a game of Weiss and your opponent played a card that you have never seen before? And like any player, you ask nicely what the card does and your opponent explained and you go, wait, what? In this video, I'm going to look at events that are, they're interesting events. Some cards are going to be great and some are going to be just fun interaction cards. Some of them are even going to be pretty shit. Now most of the, wait, what? Cards are events and there are some character cards that have confusing text like this one and good god this one as well. I'm going to be sticking to events in this video and those character cards, we'll save them for another time. I'm going to pick about two to three cards of each color and there are actually a lot more than the ones I'm just going to pick but these are the ones that quickly come to mind. And with that being said, let's start off in yellow. The first card we're going to look at is Lie Detector in Konosuba Set 2. Your opponent top checks their deck and declares its level. You say truth or lie and your opponent reveals their card. If the level of that card matches to what your opponent said and you declared it the truth, you draw two. If the level does not match with what they declared and you said lie, you draw two. So if they declared the correct level and you said truth or vice versa, if they declared a different level than what they actually revealed and you said lie, you draw two. If, uh, if they declared the correct level and you said lie or if it's not the correct level and you said truth, you get nothing. The draw two is super good since you don't have to discard, but holy shit, this is such a gamble card, it's ridiculous. The one good thing, either than the draw two possibly hitting, is that you do get to see the top of your opponent's deck so you could plan accordingly, but like, who runs this card? I do. This is just a fun card. At best, you know what the top card of your opponent's deck is, and you could possibly draw two. At worst, this is just a card that's taking up space in your deck, and you just wasted valuable hand size for nothing. At least there's no cost. Now let's stick with Konosuba with this 1-1 one, one event called Freeze. If you are level 2 or lower and your opponent is 1 or lower, ditch 3, send this to your level, and you get an additional turn. Yes, you get 2 turns in a row. Now if you're at level 2 and your opponent has a level 0, this card cannot save you, so you might as well just scoop at this point. When you play this card, you pay the cost and everything, you go straight to level 2. Why? Well, you can get your early drop beaters quicker on the field, you get two battle phases, you can accelerate your deck quicker, you get two battle phases, your opponent really won't be ready for the multiple attacks that you're going to be doing because you're getting multiple attack phases, did I mention that? So you play your turn, you go through everything, end of Encore step, your turn starts again. I'm also going to be adding Everyday Explosion Magic, which is kind of the same condition as this card, except you burn your opponent one six times. So that means if damage cancels, since it's not one big block, you keep going. So you burn one, then you burn one, then you burn one, then you keep going until you've done it six times. That card's fucking nuts. Let's move on to Goblin Slayer. Here's a card I actually talked about, Cyclone. I'm sorry, Dice. Cyclone is what the Japanese call dice for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why, but anyway, 1-1, one, one, send this to memory. At the start of your main phase, both players top check their deck. If both players reveal a level 0 character, meal the top card of your stock. If both players reveal level 3 characters, stock charge 4 cards. Your opponent does not get these effects, it's just you. One good thing is that climaxes do not count as the top check, and this is just a huge gamble. It's kind of fitting for the name as well. Not a lot of level 3s are run, like, in general. Most level 0s go around 12 to 16 cards. That should be more of enough clue on whether you should run this card or not. I personally wouldn't run this. Who am I kidding? Of course I'm going to run this. Let's go to blue with one of the older sets on the list. Lucky Star. 100 Mega Shock is a 2-2 counter where you choose one battling character and they get 6 soul for the turn. You can play this during your turn if you know you're going to go for lethal or if you just want to deck refresh your opponent. Or you can play it as a counter and give 6 soul to your opponent's character. So that way they'll be swinging for a minimum of 7 soul, not counting climaxes and other boosts. Now this is on the list because... What if you don't cancel? You're gonna be taking seven, minimum, to the face. So the whole point of this card is that your opponent overswings and then you could cancel, but again, what if it doesn't cancel? I'm also gonna be adding Manor Lecture because it does pretty much the exact same thing, but adds the cannot side attack, 
but this card is a lot tougher to pull off because you have to mill the top card of your deck and it has to be a level 1 or higher, but two of your characters do get the protection. Most likely you will cancel. Or not. Let's take a break from the gimmicks and let's add some good cards in here for once. Forest of Giant Trees lets you search for two Titan characters. You ditch a card, then you send this to your clock. You are going to be going for the Titan pieces pretty much, you know, the 3 2 ones. Because you're not clocking the top card of your deck, you're ruling out the possibility of clocking something important or even a climax. The clock ditch, again, not a big deal, like, at all. And this card is very necessary for Titan builds. It helps triple out your 3 2 Titan if you're still running that deck. This card is amazing overall. Now back to the gimmicks. Nuisance Puyo is a 3-0 where you ditch 4 blue Puyo and you can mill 2 cards from your opponent's deck and then you shuffle 8 cards from their waiting room into their deck. Now, I know what you're thinking, I need to have a whole playset in my hand. Good, I mean yes, but kind of no. Blue Puyo lets you have as many copies of it in your deck. And that card's actually kind of sweet, it gets 2k for each blue Puyo so you could get 5k5 with a full row. Now, is this doable? Yes, maybe. You do need to build a deck with the majority of it being blue so you could get this going and have it blue Puyo centered. There are ways to turbo Puyos into your hand, like uh, this card maybe as a one of. I only have one card in green and this is actually one of my favorite cards of all time. Otsumatsu Otoshi is a 3-6 card where you can only have one copy in your deck. Reveal your hand. If you have all the Sweets Dashi Matsu Brothers in your hand, you win the game. This card cannot be used in official tournaments. Yes, Exodia, in Weiss. Also, <laughs> I laughed at the reveal your hand, because if you play Yu-Gi-Oh, you might know the ruling with Mind Crush, so whatever. So you can't play this card and be like, oh yeah, bro, I have, I have all of them in my hand. But yeah, is this doable? Fuck, this needs its own video. Again, there are cards that can turbo your Matsus into your hand, like this one, but wow. Remember this, hand size is 7 cards at the end of your turn. Last color that's not purple is red. I already talked about the 1-1 explosion event, so I'm skipping that. Might as well just add that here. And we're gonna go to... Not that card. This card, the dark side, is a 3-3 climax combo counter event. <laughs> what? Where you burn for however many star killer climaxes you have in your waiting room, plus one. And you choose a red character and they get 2k for the turn. The burn is cool, you can finish off your opponent during their turn, and the 2k boost isn't that bad. I wish it was a little more, but it does a lot of things, so that's excusable. Pretty much this is on the list because it's a climax combo counter event that burns during your opponent's turn. Up next we have a card in Review Starlight. Unexpected Morning Walk Home says choose two cards in your hand and your opponent may choose for you to reveal them. If they say no, salvage two characters. If they say yes, and if you reveal two characters with Hikari and Karen in their name, salvage three. If the cards you choose do not include a Hikari or Karen, salvage one. What the fuck? Either way you're salvaging one card. If you're running a Karen Hikari ship deck, I'm sorry, I mean the 3-2 Climax combo where they each like help each other out. You will most likely have two of these characters in your hand at any given time and salvaging three or two in the process. Now the whole salvaging thing is pretty damn good, but at a pay two, it's kind of steep, but it's not like there is a pay one that lets you salvage two characters. <sighs> How about a card in Haruhi? I don't want my channel to be banned from the Weiss YouTube community. Weiss too? So here's a different famous Haruhi card. It's Tour in the City. It's a 1-3 event where you take the top 5 cards of your deck. Your opponent separates them in a stack of 2 and 3 cards. You choose one of those stacks and add them to your hand. Add the rest of your deck and shuffle it. Your entire fate is in the hand of your opponent. This card is pretty funny though and I personally really do like it. Better to pay three. Are you really paying three for a meme? Do you even know whose channel you're watching right now? Honestly, you need the stock for the 1-0 standby Haruhi or the 0-0 Haruhi. Although, this is a really fun card to play. I personally only run one in my Haruhi deck. You know, I'll cover this card in the next video. 
Now those are some of my favorite personal interesting event cards. Some are fun, some are good. Well, I mean like two, two or three of them are good. But you know, there's still some fun cards that you might not have heard of or have heard of. But I just like showcasing the many cards of White Shores because I really do love this game. And yeah, we're gonna call the video there. If you wanna see some more White Shores content like this, Go ahead and subscribe. I upload at least once a week. And let me know what your favorite event cards are. And if you want to see another video like this where I tackle more event cards or maybe some character cards, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video.